we are at the Ibum e-library venue for the business and investment seminar organized by the Mitchell and Michelle um, business schools this morning I some of the guests some of the guest speakers have already arrived and we are right now at the VIP lounge of the e-library where you have um, Nigeria's foremost business entrepreneur and a one-time presidential aspirant of this country professor Patu Tomi he's already here and then we also have Dr. Valata who is also already here also with us here is Dr. Mar- Marcel a formata of Amicom's group is also right here in the VIP lounge of the Aquaibum E Library. In a short while, we're going to be speaking with each of them, getting to find out what we're expecting to see and hear them say this morning. The atmosphere is thick, excitement is so much here, and everybody is ready, expectant, and I can assure you, it's going to live up to its expectations. In a short while, we'll be speaking with them. Please stay with us right here on 247 Niger TV. At this point, I wish to hand over the microphone to him to give us the chairman's opening remarks. Dr. He is Saval Atta and is the chairman of this summit this morning. He's been so many things in Akwaibum State, uh, from permanent secretary to chairman of committees and all of that. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Saval Atta is one person who wouldn't be visiting Akwaibum for this event. He is an Akwaibum indigent. So let's assess the evolution of business in Akwaibum and from how it was and what it is right now. Yeah, thanks so much. I, I, in a summary, this uh, summit is very timely in the sense that we have uh, we started up an R N I for as a state, and we have gone far by the infrastructure development as entry points activity. Now we're going to business and investment, and how to tie up these things to the good roads, to the airport, to the seaport, and that's why we are here. And we need data to enable us build industries and make investments. And uh, with the depth knowledge, local knowledge of what is, I bring my global thinking as a UN uh, expert to apply properly. And you see the various resource persons are those that have very global knowledge of what we're going to talk. Okay. So what, what do we look forward to seeing or hearing from, from this event? Yes, we're trying to see how we could start uh, looking at the uh, sectors that are very viable to the state, like the agricultural sector, mineral development, and bringing up SMEs at whatever level, and we look at the strength that is available in the, in the state. We start with the SME thing of uh, in the 31 local government areas, whether we could just start springing up with uh, the, within the next four or five years, bring over five five SMEs within it and three capital ones in each of the uh, senatorial districts. Okay, finally, before we go, um, certain persons believe that Aquaibo might do not have the right mindset for business. Do you share the school of thought? Yes, that's why the mature school is here to also build up their capacity and their capability in uh, coping with what we're going to discuss and we bring up the business uh, opportunities and with an incoming uh, government and governor which we anticipate his background is economic based and the finances will not be it's too like tight. You're sure. I'm sure. I'm I mean, sure. it's an election. It could go either way. Uh, yes, but then uh, the two principal candidates, I know, okay. the ones that are is quite good. Mm. And the right person is the one we're going to support rightly. And you know. Okay. Uh, I, I assume, I assume, <laughs> I do not know. Thank you very much, Savalata, for coming. <laughs> Thank you. I want to welcome all the participants to this 2015 summit. I also want to recognize my colleagues, especially Pat Tommy, in the price of crude oil in the global market. This market failure has adversely affected the economy of many oil producing countries. The worst hit being countries like Nigeria and even Canada, which economy depends largely on the sale of oil for sustenance. This summit will not come at a better time than now, when there is serious need for a paradigm shift from a mono economy to a more vibrant and diversified economy, which is knowledge and technology based and business driven. The present economic misfortune serves as an eye opener for us as a country to realize the need to develop other sectors of the economy. 
especially the rail sector, as insight shows that Nigeria had a robust economy before the discovery of oil in the 50s. The development of other sectors was overshadowed by the oil boom of the 70s. Now that the country is at the crossroad of economic development, it is time to develop and implement and services. Favorable foreign trade policies also open a vista of business windows to the international market. Strategically located is the Gulf of Guinea with easy access to Europe and America by seaports or routes. Apart from the threats posed by economic liberal, uh, liberalization policy and other obnoxious trade treaties which encourage dumping of foreign products in the Nigerian markets, we are faced with the threat of inaction in the face of daunting challenges to the economy. And the determination to build a home grown economy. And that's serious threat is lack of database as a veritable tool for sustainable economic planning. I came with this document, which we did. I say we, a Bible State Economic Survey report. As I was a permanent secretary by then, and I found that we have a database upon which to start up with Aquaibo. This was published in 2005 when I was permanent secretary, Minister of Economic Development. We still found time, even within the service, to show that our PhD was not or is not wasted, isn't it? Thank you. I have brought this document in case those who must have kept it for today. When we're talking about robust data, if you've not done this for your state head of service, Imo, Secretary, go and develop a socio-economic study report that will span over 15 years, in fact, in new cases, 25 years, so that you can build things up with data. It is in realization of this need that M&M &M Business School has convened this summit that this should not be another talk show. Rather, let it be a platform for robust interaction to develop a roadmap for sustainable driven economy, starting with an economic study of your respective states so that you can build and invest. This summit was a duty to the society to develop an implementable, an implementable framework with achievable targets and well set timelines. The time to act is now and we must act fast too. Thank you for your audience. We shall now continue as I hand over the microphone to the managing director and the chief executive officer of Amakam Global, who is the brand behind this gathering, Dr. Marcel Pomata, who also doubles as the chancellor, Mitchell and Mitchell Business School, to give us his welcome address. Chancellors. Still on the 247 Niger TV, and we're right here at the VIP lounge of the Aquaibom e Library for the Investment and Business Summit. 
2015 organized put together by the Mitchell and Michel Business School. And right here is a man at the center of this all, the host for today's event. I'm talking about Dr. Marcel, a formata of Amicom's group. Good morning, sir. Good to have you here. You're welcome. Okay, so you f let me start first of all by saying you look um, you look dazzling in this suit. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about what we're expecting to see this morning. Uh, this morning, we're expecting to see um, Pater Tommy have his discourse on how to grow this nation, this country from oil-driven nation to economy that is driven by people, by entrepreneurs. We also expect to hear Lake Aga talk to us later and Savalata will be chairing the occasion and that will be after my address. Okay, I, I first, the first question that I had in my mind when I was leaving my house this morning was, what prompted, why would you want to do this, something like this in Akwaibu? I mean, this must cost a lot of resources and it's actually free of charge. I don't know if you know, you know, but it's worth of note that everybody that's attending this is doing so absolutely free. And you have quite a crowd here. So what prompted, what necessitated this move? Um, I think what necessitated this was um, uh, looking at the uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs theory uh, at the teaching life, you know, uh, you begin to say what the next thing to do when you got to the actualization stage in life, what next? And I think for me, what next should be MMBS, Mitchell and Mitchell Business School. Uh, an institution, a platform where people can come together, use the power of network, leverage and live, succeed and have everything on where we are going to, where uh, a nation where our country will be in the next 10 20 years okay um let's talk about gathering the, the the crop of persons you have today it's elite it's massive i mean standing right here feel starstruck it's it's a whole lot it's almost everything so let's talk about how easy it was or how not easy it was to gather this crop of persons here it's not been easy you know it's cost us a lot in, in Naira, in US dollars. As a matter of fact, some of our guests, because we paid in US dollars and have to fly them in. Some of them were not even in Nigeria at the moment, you know. But I feel this is what next for me. For me, this is actualization. For me, this is fulfillment. Okay, you have um, mostly, um, largely, young, the young population, youths and young persons around here. What does this mean for the economy? What does this mean for the future of Nigeria? Yeah, you see, when you look at the, um, when, you, when you look at the population, Nigeria has about 50 to 60 percent um, young people, you know, unemployed. And the United Nations Industrial Organization raised that 90 percent of the enterprise are run by private private sector, and so I'm trying to see how we can look at the, talk to the young men to begin to not look at government, not look at the oil, but begin to look at inward into themselves and see what they can do, what changes they can make. If they can come together, it's not a quiet boom project. It's not a south south project. I know it's more of south south because I know I have guests from neighboring state. I have head of service from a neighboring uh, you know state where we're doing business all around here. But it's not about them, it's, it's more about a nation. Mm. Because I have my business spread across the, the, the 28 cities and I feel there's need to actually impact on them. Mm. Yes, Amicom have actually made visible impact in the lives of people all over the country and I feel this is a way of giving back. Okay, it, since you mentioned it, I think it will be it won't be fair for us to end this without talking about Amicom, which is the brand you represent. Great brand you've built out there. Yes, thank you, yeah. Okay, so um, what is the future for Amicom? I know you, you just started the the foam manufacturing outfit. It just started a while ago. What what is the future? What does this, what are we looking to see in the near future for Amicom Global? Yeah, for Amicom Global Limited, I'm looking at to see um, entrepreneurs like myself. Um, this platform, I'm actually looking up to being able to replicate more Amicom. You know, I, I wish we could replicate a hundred, a thousand Amicom. And I think there's no way I could achieve this if I don't bring them together to share my story, to tell them how it's been, to let them know that, look, these things are visible, that you can do it and get the right people to also mentor them in the different, you know, sectors, the finance and the human resources and relationship in the, and in all the sectors to ensure that we get there. Okay, I do wish you all the best in your business and I look forward to having a lovely time out here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. An address by Dr. Marcelo Komata, the Chancellor 
Mitchell and Mitchell Business School, Nigeria, during the 2015 First Quarter Business Summit held at Ibom E Library, Uya Kwebom State, on March 16, 2015. My chairman, Sabah Latao, a lead panel discussant, Pastor Tommy, is very apt as Nigeria navigates its way to industrialization. The second significant reason is the stories behind my first business card and my encounter with Maslow hierarchy of needs theory. My first business card. About two decades ago, I printed some cards and I wrote a number of businesses on them. They have things like Marcelo Formata and Sons, Importer, Exporter, General Merchant and Contractor, and others, with each contact addresses, office, email, and phone numbers. Three years later, to impact the lives of my immediate family and those that I came in contact with. So after I graduated from school, I secured a job in a bank. It was the in thing at that time. If you work or you had a sustaining contract with the bank, you must be rich. If you work, it was a dream come true for me. Three years down the line, the banking revolution made me one of his unfortunate victims. I watched with my eyes as my dream of a decent life drip to oblivion. It was hard. It was harsh. I was helpless. But like they say, necessity is the mother of invention. This necessity led to the invention of Amicom Global Limited. And though the need to survive and have a better life was the basics of the set of passion, hard work, determination has evolved the American brand into a world-class enterprise, a global employer of labor with annual turnover of more than 500% of what it was in our first year. It is I standing here to tell a story today, but I wasn't the only one who toiled day and night to build this business. I acknowledge the contributions of dedicated men and women who helped drive the vehicle of the vision with me. Beyond enabling millions of Nigerians have a better life, this business is bringing happiness to families. I may not be listed on Forbes list as one of African or Nigerian richest, but take a look at the hearts of the millions that have come in contact with the American brand. There you will see impact, visible impact. And this is what we stand for at American. <laughs> it is why we are here in the first place, to enhance lives with passion. To us, this is far superior to mail listing on any magazine, Forbes inclusive. Now my encounter with Maslow hierarchy of needs. I had two major encounters with the pyramid of Maslow hierarchy of needs. I remember being taught the topic in the psychology class during my days in school. I could not find myself in the pyramid because the lowest run on it was hunger because I was famished which is the grandfather of hunger. As fate will have it, I stumbled on it a few years ago, and I enthusiastically checked where I am on the pyramid. What I found was fulfilling, was fulfilling. But how fulfilling is the fulfilling? I found out that I am at what Maslow described as a self-actualization stage. So the big question is, what next? 
gentlemen and ladies, the quest to answering the what next question, the quest to finding the real meaning of fulfillment, the quest to bringing this story to life from the foundation is the foundation on which MMBS stands and the house on which it rests. I have fallen and risen, I've fallen and risen again. I've had doubts and sometimes clarity and direction seems improbable. But a man in search of something greater, sometime, something greater than himself, cannot be held bound. He will fall and rise again. And this ambition, fueled by passion, engineered by hard work, has enabled me to traverse the road of the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of business successfully. And for me, the question of what next is in the raising bold entrepreneurs like myself and providing them with an enabling platform that will empower them to thrive in the Nigerian dynamic business environment. To find fulfillment in succeeding and helping others find their potentials to succeed as well. The economic possibilities of this nation are real. And the small and medium scale sector, which according to United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, plays a critical role in economic development, non-private and other related institutions to take advantage of the unique models the MMBS offers. Finally, let me leave you with a quote I love so much in Steve Jobs' commencement speech at the Stanford University. He said, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you will certainly be right. He explained that for the past three years of his life, he looks into the mirror every morning and asks himself, if today was the last day of my life, would I do what I'm about to do? And whenever the answer has been no for too many times in a row, Jeff said he knew he needed to change something. Therefore, as we sit here today for this business and investment summit, I request that we reflect and ask ourselves a flip version of that Steve Jobs question this way. If today were the last day of my life, would I want to leave Nigeria with an estimated 40 million unemployed population? If your answer is no, like mine, then it's time to change something for this nation. That thing that needs to be changed will form the cross of our discussion here today. For MMBS, just like the hen in Kofiana's popular development story of the hen and the ghost, it is a lifetime commitment. I wish you all a fruitful and a rewarding discourse. Thank you for listening.